If we have two graphs written in the same graphical space, so the scale can be um, held constant, and, uh, then we can say something about the relationship between uh, the slope of a demand curve and the price elasticity of demand. And, and specifically, it, it's, we can do this when we've got two demand curves that pass through the same point. So I, I've drawn a demand curve, any demand curve. I've chosen the U.S. wheat market. You know, by the law of demand, the, the, this demand curve is downward sloping. If we had a demand curve that looked like this instead of the one that we've got pictured there, so we've got a really steep demand curve, and we're, we're talking about demand at this price quantity pair, P naught, Q naught. We can say, we know that the price elasticity of the steeper blue demand curve at P naught and Q naught is smaller in absolute value the, um, than the price elasticity of demand of this black demand curve D. By smaller, I mean the price elasticity of demand in absolute value is lower for this blue line than it is for this black line. Uh, and think about it, if we're thinking about two, two different prices, let's suppose price falls to P1, if we're on this black demand curve, go back to the black pen, quantity is going to respond to that price change um, fairly, fairly uh, aggressively. By contrast, if we're on this steeper curve and we see the same price fall, notice if, if you're on a steeper curve passing through the same point, the associated quantity response, called Q1 prime is going to be much smaller. So, and that's that's going to be true every time. If the scale of the axes are correct, the steeper curve going through the same point is going to be less elastic. Now, be careful. I, I you know, a guy named Ross Perot used to run. Well, he ran for president a couple times as a self-financed independent. He was very rich. Probably still is. Uh, and anyway, he he was famous for buying all this TV time, and he'd go through these graphs and. He just over and over and over again skewed the story that Grass told by, by manipulating his axes. You know, making you know, uh, maybe this distant might might mean, uh, you know, a, a million dollar um, price difference, but he'd make it look really small just just by <laughs> manipulating his axes. So so don't be don't fall prey to that kind of manipulation, but, but uh, if we have the same scale, so it's one common set of axes, one steep, one's flat, we know the steeper one is going to be uh, less elastic. And then by, let's just draw a dramatically uh, flatter one, if a flatter one, uh, I'm going to use red for this, if we had a really flat, oh, I'm in the pointer, not the pen mode, all right, here we go. If we had a really flat uh, demand curve, we'll call that D double prime. Well, this, this demand curve is really highly elastic, meaning consumers on this red demand curve are, are super responsive to changes in price. And again, we'll use that fall to price P1. No, look at this quantity response. Woo! Q1 double prime. Same price fall, but a a much more dramatic increase in quantity demanded if we're on this uh, red curve. So the, the percent change in quantity is going to be really big relative to the percent change in price, which is in the denominator. So the, the fraction is going to be much larger. Um, let me give you just a couple of extreme, extreme cases in the next panel. In the extreme, we talk about perfectly inelastic demand curves at, we'll call that D, just again. Um, we'll perfectly inelastic. And notice what's happening here. Even a really big, let's, I'll start at some initial price, 
and quantity P naught, Q naught. Even a really big price change, let's do a price increase this time, a huge, a doubling of price, and look, quantity demanded stays exactly the same. So the proportionate change in quantity is zero, and then you know, divided by whatever, um, however large, let's call this 100% increase in price, it doubles, you know, sort of, I'm not the best artist, but I was trying to go for a doubling. So we get zero divided by 100%, which is equal to zero. Remember, price elasticity of demand is the percent change in quantity demanded divided by the percent change in price. All right, I'm, I'm going to draw a new picture because I've gunked this one up, but um, another extreme case coming up. Here's the other extreme case, and this is where demand is just a flat line. And we call this a perfectly elastic demand. And uh, what, what this shaped function means, it's a little less intuitive than the perfectly inelastic vertical line case. What this means is that if there were even a teeny tiny fractional increase in price in the limit zero, but um, any little teeny tiny uh, increase in, in price would cause quantity demand to go all the way down to zero. Whereas, you know, you you whatever you charge at price P naught, you could just sell whatever you wanted to, to produce at that, given this demand. Uh, we're gonna see, we're gonna use this type of demand curve for the demand facing an individual firm in a perfectly competitive market. If a firm tried to raise its price, well, everybody would run to their competitors. Um, the, the elasticity measure technically is infinity. There, there'd be a, 100% fall in uh, quantity, per, quantity demanded for you know even the teeny tiniest um, increase in price. You know the teeny tiniest would be just a smidgen above zero, and so we talk about an infinitely elastic demand curve is, is how people talk about this perfectly elastic demand curve. Made with DoodleCast Pro.